am glad that God gave us what he's given us this week. And Brother Jim will anoint you in just a little bit. You Make sure you remind me uh, before we leave. Uh, but God give us this passage of Scripture, this, this thought this week on our minds. And I, I want to share it with you. Um, I guess I'll give you the title. Let me read first. Psalm 55, first five verses. This is, of course, David. He is the chief musician. That's how we know that this is David that has wrote this particular psalm. In verse number one, he says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make noise because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore, pained within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We praise you, Lord. We ask God that you'd be with us this morning. I, 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 Lord, I need you. I pray, God, that you would help me to get myself out of the way Lord, that you could preach through me. Lord, you know our hearts, you know our lives, you know what we've been through, what we're going through, what we're going to go through. And God, I pray this morning that this message that you give us, God, would be a blessing to those that's here. God, help us to realize that we are all in this together, but God, you're the same God yesterday as you are today, and God, for tomorrow and eternity, you'll be the same. Father, for that, we're thankful, we love you, we honor you, we ask God that if there's someone here that has a need, God, may they run to Christ this morning and lay it all at the feet of Jesus. We love you. We thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Let me give you the title of today's message, and I want to get into this. I'm going to try to preach the whole chapter here today if, if God would be our helper, but I want to preach a message today, and before I give you the title, let me just ask you some, some questions, Okay. How many of you in life, now you don't have to raise your hand, but I want you to think about what I'm going to ask you. Uh, is there anybody here today that, that just gets bogged down with life? I, I'm talking uh, discouragement comes in, and, and you feel like a failure. You feel like no one loves you. You feel like that you're alone, and you feel like that you're in this thing, and you're, you're just trying to plow through this thing called life. But, man, it, it, sometimes in life it's almost impossible, you feel like that you can't go another mile. You feel like that you want to give up. You, you feel like that no one cares for you. I'm talking about when you really don't believe that you can go on. I'm talking about the weight of life. I'm talking about the burden of just living in the life that we are living in. Sometimes the weight of it, the oppression that we face, sometimes makes us feel like, you know what, I just can't do this anymore. You know, the, I, I wonder why that the suicide rate is at an all-time high, and it's because I look around and see so much devastation that's going on around us. You turn on the television, there's nothing good anymore. You think that it's good, but it's not. You talk to family members, you realize that their life is just as turned upside down as yours are. You go to your neighbor's house, you, you realize that, listen, they're facing the same battles that you're facing. And the sad part is, you come to church and you realize this, that Christians aren't exempt from it. We all are going through this, this thing called life, and man, it's a battle. You're trying to fight the good fight of faith, and, and as, as Paul taught us to, to, or Timothy taught us to, to do, but man, it just seems like, Brother Jay, that you know what? Sometimes it's almost like it's not even worth fighting. Can I say something? There's nothing new under the sun. The very same thing that you and I are going through and faced with today, Brother David went through the same thing. I'm talking about the weight of life. Paul said it like this, the Apostle Paul. Paul's no stranger to uh, uh, the thorns in the flesh and the trials of life. Matter of fact, if anyone deserved the trials of life, it would be Paul, and Paul realized that. But Paul made it sound like this in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul said, we're all troubled. We're all troubled, and we're troubled on every side. But notice he says, yet we're not, dis <clears throat> we're not distressed. In other words, we're not going to stress out about it. It, it, it. Life is what it is. He also said, we're perplexed but not in despair. He said, we're persecuted, but not forsaken. And I like what he said at the end of that. He says, we're cast down, but we're not destroyed. Can I say this? Even though life, when it surrounds you and it gets you down and, and troubles come and trials 
uh, come against you and you feel like you can't go on, can I say this? You can. If Paul did it, you can do it. If David did it, you can do it. If your parents did it, you can do it. If grandma and grandpa did it, guess what? You can do it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. My point is that is this, is make sure that you take Christ through it with you. Don't try to do it on your own. What does it mean to be burdened down? Well, I looked up the definition of burden, and it means this, loaded with weight. I'm talking about just, you've got a, a cord of wood on a half-ton pickup truck. Now, some of you may not know what that means, but I'm telling you, what, it's a lot of weight. And it's hard to, to get your engine to move because you're bogged down in every rut you, you hit, you feel like you're stuck. Can someone testify with me? You got to lock it in four-wheel drive sometimes. Amen? How many of you wear, wear Crocs? I got a pair of Crocs, and uh, you know they've got two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive in the Crocs. If you got the back flipper thing flipped up, you're in two-wheel drive. But you take that back strap and put it down and put your foot in there, you could run and that shoe ain't coming off. That means you're in four-wheel drive. Listen, sometimes in life, we've got to lock our Crocs in. Amen? Lock and loaded, ready to go. Brother, y'all laugh at me, but you know it's truth because we all get bogged down with life. It means loaded with weight. We're encumbered. We're oppressed. We're overwhelmed. You ever been overwhelmed? Family problems? Right? And you all should be shouting. <laughs> Your kids' problems, their kids' problems. Now I'm getting into the grandparents and great grand I'm not even there yet. But we all are faced with burdens. I'm talking about to the point that you don't want to go on. Can I say all throughout the Bible you will read stories like this? For example, in the in the book of Exodus, chapter number five, Moses had left Egypt. He had come to the realization that he was going to serve God. Of course, him and Aaron, his brother, he was up on Mount Sinai. God told him to go back to, to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And, of course, you know, like we all do, we question God. Moses goes back to Pharaoh and says, Pharaoh, no, I need you to do something. You need to let God's people go. We just want to go three days' journey in the wilderness, and we want to worship God. And just like the world does to you and I, Pharaoh looked at Moses and said this, who in the world are you? And by the way, who is this God that you speak of? I'm not going to let the children. Matter of fact, Moses, you can go ahead and leave. And I'm going to tell you, because you came to me, this is what I'm going to do to your people. I'm going to oppress them. I'm going to burden them more. Moses probably wondered what he was going to do. But you know what Pharaoh did? You see, before the Egyptians were supplying the children of Israel with straw, to make brick and mortar. But Pharaoh said, from now on, because you came, I'm going to burden God's people more. Go tell the people that you're no longer, we're no longer going to give them the straw that it takes to make brick and mortar, but they've got to go find it for themselves. Oh, and by the way, when you tell them that, make sure that you let them know that they still have to do the same amount of work that they did before. They become oppressed. The weight of life surrounded them. They thought that they could not go on. The very same thing happened here in the book of Psalms, chapter 55. If you'll notice with me, David has come to a place in his life, the only person he knows to turn to is God. The sad part with us today is, before we go to God, we like to pick up the phone and go to somebody else. Someone say amen with me this morning. We want to get justification and we want to get somebody else's opinion when we ought to go to God. David set the example here in verses 1 through 5. In verses 1 and 2, he goes to God and he says, God, give ear, give ear to my prayer. O oh God, and, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and I make a noise. Well, what was going on in David's life? Well, a lot was going on in David's life is a lot in what you and I are dealing with today in life. If you'll read on down in verses 3, 4, and 5, notice in verse 3 he said, because of the voice of the enemy. A lot of times in life, how many of you get a little spiritual sometimes and you want to blame the devil for all your problems? We know that's his job. The thief cometh not but for to kill, to, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus, I've come 
to give you life and that I've come to give it more abundantly. And yet we'll allow the enemy to get into our ears. Fear will come, but God has not given us the spirit of fear, has he? He's not given us but that fear because he continues to whisper things into our ears. You know, that's why Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you come to Christ, you have an obligation to filter out the things of this world and the enemy. The enemy will tell you anything that will make you feel good, but he'll also tell you things that will make you fearful. But remember, God has not given you a spirit of fear. God has given you a spirit to trust in him. Notice it wasn't only the enemy, but it was the world around him. If you'll notice with me in verse number three, he said, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. How many wicked people that you know? I, I'm talking about people that they despise God. They, they don't like Christians. They don't like people that go to church. And, and, and you know, there's those, those uh, religious folks, those pretenders, I, I like to call them, the Sunday-only Christians. And if you're a Sunday-only Christian, don't take no offense to this. That's between you and God. But those people that, you know, they'll, they'll profess to be God, godly people or Christians, but yet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they'll live like the devil. You know, I don't know anyone's heart, but I know a Christian ought to act like a Christian, talk like a tr Christian, walk like a Christian, do Christian things. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's whatever this says. It's whatever God has ordered us to do. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a... New creature. He doesn't do the same things that he or she used to do. So we have the enemy that's coming against us. We have people around us that are, that are oppressing us. Those people that want to put their thumbs on you. Those people that tell you how bad or whatever you've been and how you don't deserve the Lord. And, and notice at, verse, at the end of verse 3, he says, for they cast iniquity. You know what that means? It's unrighteousness. They do unrighteous things to aggravate you. Someone ever did some things to you that you just want to, well... Lay down the cross for a second. Huh? Try to beat the snot out of them. Say something that you regret later, but you're so mad in the moment, you just want to handle the situation now. Right? People just, hey, you know the devil, he knows exactly what button to push. So don't your family. So don't your spouse. Sometimes so don't your pastor. You see what I'm saying? Every angle, Paul or David was getting the afflictions of the world. But that's not all. Not only was he getting it from the enemy and people around him, he was getting it from people inside the church. Notice in verses number 12 through 14. He said, for it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have bore it. In other words, he said, I could have handled it if it was someone that wasn't a Christian. But he said, neither was it that he hated me that did it, to magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself. In other words, he said, I would have just stayed away from him. But notice in verse 13, he said, but it was thou a man mine equal, my guide. It was someone that David looked up to and trusted in, and mine acquaintance. Notice in verse 14, he said, we took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of God in company. You know, just because you're a Christian, just because you come to church, doesn't mean you're going to face, you're not going to face oppression. It's, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be hunky-dory, peachy keen, a bed of roses. Sometimes we'll stumble into a bed of thorns. And you're going to fight your way. Sometimes you'll find yourself in the midst of a valley, one of the greatest valleys that you've ever been in, but that doesn't mean you stop. David was there. How many of you, don't raise your hands, have been there and possibly are not there? And if you're not, trust me, you will get there. It's what we call life. What do we do with a burden? What do we do when we become so burdened down that we don't think that we can go on? Well, let me ask you a question. You all know what I'm talking about. How many of you, when these troubles come, these trials and these oppressions and Maybe your families do things that and you just, you're embarrassed or maybe you don't want to deal with. So, so what you do is you say, I just feel like I'm just going to up and I'm going to move away. Huh? I know I'm preaching this morning. See, I felt that way. Don't want to go. I don't want to be seen. I just want to go into a hole. I want to hide. I, I don't want to deal with it. 
You ever been there? Can I say David was the same? Matter of fact, if you'll look at verse number 6, David says this, And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly and be at rest. You know what David wanted to do? He wanted to run from all of his problems. He wanted to fly away. Here's the thing. That's the easiest thing to do. But can I say this? As you run from your problems and as you try to hide from your problems, can I say this? That the problems will eventually find you. You're not exempt from having problems. And what you're faced with today, you may not be faced with it tomorrow, but if you don't stand up to it today, you're going to face it somewhere down the line. The easiest thing is to quit. Not only that, David wanted to pack up and leave. He said, I, lo, then I would wander off far off and remain in the wilderness. He was just saying, I'm just going to go somewhere where no one knows where I'm at. You ever been there? I'd be lying to you. I'm going to get real personal with you, real spiritual. I'd be lying to you. If the past year, I haven't said, I would just want to fly away. I just want to go. I don't want to deal with things. But that was the easy thing to do. God didn't call us into easy. God called us to fight. Someone with me this morning. So what do we do when we become so burdened down? What do we do when we're so troubled? I, I believe that, that David and you and I and David, we've all been in the same ship. We face the same things. And, but I, I believe that David gives us the answer. There's three things that I believe that we can take from this passage of Scripture that will help us in the time that we come so burdened down that we don't think that we can go on. And you may be like that today. The very first thing that we need to do, look with me at verse number 22. Or I'm sorry, verse number 16. David said this. Remember, David's been through it. He's been through the oppression, the enemy's attacks, the person in the church. You know, let, let's, you know, someone in the church says something to you, man, you just fly off. And, oh, I can't believe they said that. But yet somewhere along the line, you've said something to someone or did something to someone. Someone say, amen, I know I'm not preaching to myself. It's how the devil uses things. It's, it's what he does. That's his job. He, the, he's the author of confusion. Because, you know, Christians should never be mean to Christians. Well, you, you, have you just forgot Christians? You're just human. You say things, you do things that, that you shouldn't say and you shouldn't do. David was in the David should have never did what he did, but he did it. Right? But he was a great man of God. He was the apple of God's eye. He was a man after God's own heart. And God knew that. So God says, I'm going to bless you, David. So David says, listen, I've been oppressed. I know what's going on. I've been in the trouble of my life. I don't know what to do. But I do know this. I'm going to call upon the Lord. Notice in verse number 16. As for me, David said, I will call upon God. When we find ourselves at a place in life where we don't think that we can go on, that we feel like we're so oppressed and everyone is against us and the enemy has, hates us and, and the, past, the pastor is always preaching to me every Sunday morning, I'm just sick of going to church because every time I go there, the preacher's yelling at me. Right? Well, I, I don't mean to be a bubble burster, but when you stand before God, God's going to remind you of your failures. Bible says that. Bible says our works do follow it, whether they be good or bad. We're going to give an account of our lives. But when we give the account of our lives and the wrong that we've done since we've come to Christ, you know, this is the greatest part about it. He's going to see the blood of Christ. The Bible says he's going to wipe all of our tears away. And you know what? For those that saved, he's going to say, come on in. Enter into the joys of the Lord. I don't want to hear the words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Don't you want to go to heaven? So if you want to go to heaven, there's some things in life that you've got to deal with, especially when it comes with depression or oppression. You find yourself at a place. David says, as for me, I will call upon the Lord. Notice before doing anything else, David cried out to God. In verses 1 and 2, he petitions the Lord. Lord, give ear to my prayer. He's begging God to hear him. 
and not to turn from him. Do not hide, God, from my earnest prayer. In verse 2, he said, listen to me and hear me, God. He was doing everything he could to get God's attention. How many of you in your life have ever tried to get God's attention and it just doesn't seem like that you're getting God's attention? (laughs) I'm doing everything I can to get God's attention. Are you doing everything that you can to get God's attention? That's what you need to do. You need to do everything within your power to get, well, what moves God? How do you get God's attention? Dad? Dad? You are my dad, aren't you? Come here, Dad. You see, it took three times for him to listen. Dad, come here. Oh, he's talking to me now. Dad, come here. Oh, see, that's how God is sometimes. Daddy, I just want to tell you I love you. (laughs) See, that's what we should do to God. We ought to call on God. And even when we don't feel as if God's there, continue to cry out to God because God will come to your rescue. And he'll come to you and he'll say, what do you need, son? Oh, I like that. That wasn't even planned. I love it when God works things out. You see, that's what you got to do. You, you got to cry out to God. And listen, when you think that God's not hearing you and he's not listening to you, just get down and say, God, I'm begging you. I need to hear from you. You see, that's where David was at. The oppression was so heavy. The discouragement from even people that he never thought would ever hurt him. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 6, he said, Seek ye the Lord. My question is, have you been seeking the face of God during your trials, during your oppression, during your depression, during the times in life where you can't go on? Have you been seeking? Now listen to me. Not seeking God on your terms. Seeking God on his terms. You see, Isaiah said, seek ye the Lord. Notice, while... He may be found. You see, I don't know how you feel this morning, but I believe that God is in our very presence. I'm a Christian. Brother Chuck's a Christian. He just waved at me. That's our signature sign right there. Sister Evelyn, she just raised her hand. So the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his name, guess what? Daddy's here this morning. So all you got to do is call on him while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. If you're here today and you've got oppression or depression or if you're lost or if you're a Christian that just needs help, would you call on him this morning? He wants to help you. David showed us that all we got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. Secondly, I like this one and hopefully we'll learn from this this morning. Not only should we call upon the name of the Lord, but if you'll look with me at verse number 22, Notice what David did once he called upon the Lord. Notice in verse 22, David said, cast thy burden. You you, you wonder where I got the title at this morning? We're all troubled. We're all burdened. There's things in life that we're faced with that we don't want to go through in our lives. So David said, first of all, call upon the name of the Lord. And secondly, what did he say? Cast. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Can I say this? The burden that you're carrying is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it. You've tried it. You've failed at it. You've tried to get assistance. You wanted nobody else to know. And you've tried to go on with put a smile on your face. But it's burdening you down. You feel like you can't go on. You want to know why? Because you've not cast it upon the Lord. Now, here's where you're going to learn something. To cast something, it means to throw it. Watch. You throw it. You cast it. Now, notice, it's over there. It's not here anymore. I've cast it. You know what I've done? I've given it to the Lord. I threw it to the altar. I can't, are you getting it this morning? But here's what we like to do. 
We put our burdens on a fishing pole. As far as we can cast them. And you know what we do? We get up from the altar. We'll look back. Well, I sure hope God takes care of that. And then when God doesn't hear us or we don't think God hears him, and if it's not done in the right amount of time that we think God ought to do it, you know what we start doing? Well, maybe I'd go back there and make sure God's taking care of it. So what you do, you've got it on a fishing pole, and you start reeling it in. You reel it. The more you reel, the closer you get to the burden that you threw and you cast. And before you long, you do it, you pick it up, and you take it right back with you. He said to cast. To cast means to throw it. Because listen, you can't do nothing with it. You can't fix it. You've tried, right? And God says, cast your burdens upon the Lord, David said. And he said, notice what happens when you cast them upon the Lord. Notice. And he shall sustain thee. You know what it means to sustain? It means this, that God will take care of your burden. Oh, you aren't getting it this morning. You ought to be running and shouting all over the church this morning. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, cast them upon the name of the Lord, and He will take care of it for you. He'll sustain it. The Bible says casting all of your care upon Him. Why? Why would we do that? For He careth for you. God doesn't want you to carry your burdens. You want to know why? Because you can't. That's why he said, cast them upon me. So if you're oppressed, depressed, going through things, burdened down, you can't go on, just cast them upon the Lord. You know what that means? Cast them and leave them. And let God take care of it. Yeah, but see, God's not doing it my time. See, that's the problem. You're not trusting in God. Sometimes God doesn't answer us the way we think we, he should answer us. is because we want it our way. Listen to me. God doesn't work on your itinerary. God's trying to teach you something. He's wanting you to trust in him. If God says he'll sustain you and he'll take care of it, guess what God's going to do? Shake your head. As Brother George Holly would say, this is the right answer. He will take care of it. So we see that we've got to call upon the Lord. We've got to cast our burdens upon the Lord. Boy, I like this one because when I was studying it, God gave me this. I'm going to go pick up my, not my burden, but my hanky. When I was studying this, God really blessed my heart. If I told you that I was hurting, would you come to my rescue? If you told me that you were hurting, should I come to your rescue? I would want to, and I would want for you to come to me, and I would want to come to you, but guess what? Sometimes I don't know that you're burdened. Sometimes you don't know that I'm burdened. So we see that we've got to call upon the name of the Lord. We know that we've got to cast our burdens upon the Lord. But I believe the most important thing that we can do as Christians and God's people is this. Notice with me, if you will, at verse number 18. In verses 16 and 17, Paul is teaching us to call upon the Lord. And if you'll notice in verse 17, he said, evening, morning, and at noon. He said, I will pray and I will cry. So David was setting the example for us to basically all day long cry out to God. And then in verse 22 he says, when you cry out to him, just cast your burdens upon him. But then in verse 18 he says, and he hath delivered my soul in peace. What did David say? He hath delivered my soul in peace. From the what? From the battle. (laughs) We've been talking about battles and burdens and trials and tribulations and things that we're going through, and we don't know why we're going through them. Well, David gives us the answer. Call upon the name of the Lord. Cast your burdens. But I believe, thirdly, if you'll look continuing on in verse 18, that was against me, for there were many with me. You know what David was saying? God, I'm not alone. There's many that's with me in this battle. As your pastor, as a friend, 
as a Christian, I'm telling you, listen to me, my friend. I don't care what you're going through, what you're dealing with. You are not alone. Can someone testify with me that you're not alone? I don't know what you're going through, but I do know this, Brother Jay, that God knows exactly what you're going through. And know what? You may, I may not be going through the same thing that you are, but can I say this? I'm going through some of the same battles that you're going through. And you know what we ought to do? As David said, we need to bear one another's burden. Huh? Huh? Did you hear that? You, you see, we think we can handle these things on our own. But I need you. And you need me. Whether you want to believe it or not, you need me. You, you, you see, notice this. I've never dealt with the loss of a child. I've never dealt with the loss of a child. I've never dealt with being told that you have cancer and I can do nothing else to help you. Go home, live peaceably, and do the very best to live the very best life that you can. I've never been done, but he has, she has, they have. You may have been lost a child or you may have been going through cancer and they told you there's nothing they can do. Can I tell you this? You don't have to go through it alone. I want to bear your burdens with you is what I'm saying. I want to be there for you. I want to help you in the time of trouble. You see, sometimes we want to take these burdens and we would be big macho men and I don't need nobody's help. I just me and the Lord. Well, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes I don't feel God. Sometimes I need you. I, I don't know what it's like to have a son that has been diagnosed with a crippling disease. My children, to my knowledge, are healthy. I, I don't know what it's like to, to lose a spouse, but you do, and you do, and you do, and there's so many, and you do, and you, it's everywhere. We've all been to places in our lives that we don't want to go, but can I say this? You don't have to go alone. <laughs> I still have my wife. I still have my, my parents. A lot of you here today have lost your parents. Not lost them if they're Christians. You know exactly where they're at. But they're not with you. And you carry that load. And, because you know what? You called on mom and you called on dad. And though you may not have agreed with the advice they gave you, you still went to them for advice. They tried their very best to help you. My preaching this morning... David was in a place in his life that everybody he was surrounded with was going through something similar. and He knew it. You know, boy, what a wonderful illustration of what we need to do when we're burdened down. The easiest thing to do when we become burdened down is to do what David mentioned. If I was a, a dove and had wings, I could fly away. You, you don't know the many times as your pastor, I said, Lord, I'll just send me to the hills of Tennessee and I'll go hide somewhere. Where, where people don't know me and I don't know them and they don't know my problems and I don't know their problems and Lord, I'll just serve you till you call me home. That's the easy way. What I fail to realize is if God was to send me down the hills of Tennessee, it would be just me and God. But God showed me that I need everybody. And guess what? You need me. <laughs> you know why? Because we're all in this together. We're all burdened down. We're all needing help. <laughs> you don't know what it means to receive a phone call. Not pastor, I need something, but pastor, I love you. I just want to pray for you. You don't know what it's like. Maybe you do, I don't know, but maybe you don't know what it's like that when you get a text and you say, Pastor, can you be here? But then you're on the other line, the other side of the coin, you say, Pastor, I just want to tell you how much I love you and care for you. That means so much to me. That's why that I do my very best to, to reach out to you as much as I can when God speaks to our heart. Because I know you're going through a lot of the same things that I'm going through. 
Now, I don't want you to bombard my phone tomorrow with phone calls and texts. Except God tell you to. But just to know that you're there sometimes means the world. Are, am I, are you with me this morning? You see, David just wanted to know, God, I'm out in this thing alone. He said, there was many with me. He wasn't alone. We need to be there. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, I'll close. Bear you one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. (laughs) How many of you, by a show of hands, have been through some devastating things in life? How many of you going through those devastating things in life felt like you were alone? Huh? Sometimes. Can I say this? You're not. God's right there. And you know what? As long as you're a member of this church, you come to be a part of this church, I can't be everywhere, neither can you, but I'll do my best to love on you. And even if I don't love on you, why don't you love on me? How's that? When I don't love you like that you think you ought to be loved, why don't you just love on me? Sound like a good deal? Because then by you loving on me, it'll remind me that I probably need to love on you. And we'll just love on each other until we get home. You see, that's what David was going through in life. I didn't preach this mo- this message this morning for a, a pity party, and I hope that you don't uh, believe that it's, it's just about Pastor Mark needing love and affection. I'm just saying we're all going through the same things in life, and we need one another. And if I call you, or if I text you, you look at your phone and say, well, I wonder why he's calling and texting me. And then Sister Teresa, she'll text and call the same person. And they'll say, well, there's a conspiracy going on at the church. Not really. It's just that we love you. And we care for you. And God's just put you on our heart. I'm just giving you an example today. We need to go to them and tell them how much we love them. Let them know that you're there for people. Let them know that you'll go with them through it. David, that was his desire. Brother Bobby, if he'll come, what a perfect song. Give me Jesus. Some of you today may be going through some things in life. You know what? I'll be honest with you. You may be going through some things in life that you're embarrassed about. You don't really want people to know. Can I say this? God already knows. So why don't you just go ahead and give it to him? Say, God, you know the situation. I need your help. But you know what? I know a lot of people here, most everybody. And I know a lot of what all of you are going through. Oh, preacher, you don't know the half. I may not know, but I know the gist of it. Because you've talked to me. You shared with me. I may not know in great detail. But can I say this? God knows far more than I know. And I just want to love on you. And you know what? If I want to love on you, can you imagine what God wants to do? Today as we stand our feet, I don't know your heart. Maybe you're troubled, you're burdened. As he sings. How many of you right now can step out of your seat? Say, Pastor, God spoke to my heart today. Man, I am troubled. I am burdened. I'm going through something in life that I just never thought I would be able to go through.